So they pastored the same church in Vegas. Amen. <laughs> Didn't they? Amen. So that's the Lord. The Lord let the witness get out around the world. Amen. And Peter's in Seoul, Korea. Amen. He's, he's ministering. Amen. So you can. It's amazing what God can do in getting the word of God out everywhere. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Let's go to what we have before us. Forgive my voice on this morning. There's the word anyway that we're concerned about. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15 says and I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he will strike your head and you will strike his heel and then another theme scripture, Revelation chapter 12, and verses 3 and 4. It says, then another sign appeared in heaven. There was a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And on his head were seven diadems. His tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that when she did give birth he might devour her child. Usher's open the door and let them in. I want to be in on the prayer. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, blessed be thy holy name. You are God and God alone. God who hears, sees, and knows and answers prayer. Come now, Lord, and feed your lambs and feed your sheep alike with thus saith the Lord. Bless your people this morning, Lord. We want to hear from heaven, spiritual manna from heaven, Lord. Healing the sick, hearing the prayers, blessing the homes, blessing the household. And then some need a miracle this morning. Let your miracle working power work through the audience. Let your healing power work through the audience. Let folks leave here healed. Some need deliverance. Be delivered this morning. May every need be met this morning. And every prayer be heard and ministered to. And let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. We do say amen. Give God a big hand of praise this morning. <laughs> Give me honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The Bible says he hung, he, hung. he, bled. he bled, he died. Yeah. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. Somebody said, with all power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to use, dear ushers, as a subject title this morning, The Seven Personalities, and then subtitle, The Woman and the Man-Child and the Great Red Dragon. My Lord. Can I go there this morning? Yes. There are seven great personalities in the book of Revelation. And they are introduced in chapters 12 through 14. 
Can I tell you who the personalities are? The woman, the great red dragon, the man child, Michael the archangel, the seed of the woman, the beast of the sea, and the beast of the earth. Can you say seven personalities? We left off with the 24 elders. And since the way these 24 elders represent the church in heaven, that's very important to know who they are and who they represent. And they are praising God for the coming of Christ's kingdom here on earth. You know, we were taught to pray as children. When you pray in the Lord's Prayer, you are to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. How many of you were taught the Lord's Prayer when you were young? Amen. The hands that are down, I will go over it this morning. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Johnson. Amen. In Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 19, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19, the Bible says, then God's sanctuary in heaven was open. Somebody say open. open. And the ark of his covenant appeared in his sanctuary. Somebody say sanctuary. Oh, there were lightnings, rumblings, thunders, an earthquake, and severe hail. How many know that'll get your attention? Amen. The Ark of the Covenant symbolizes God's presence atonement for sin and covenant with his people. No ordinary person in the Old Testament has seen the Ark of the Covenant except the high priest. And the high priest only saw it once a year on the Day of Atonement. Also, the Ark of the Covenant shows God's faithfulness in fulfilling his covenant promises to his people. And that God will destroy the enemies of his people. If you look with me at Leviticus chapter 16 and verses 2 and 3 in Leviticus chapter 16 verses 2 and 3 the Bible says the Lord said to Moses tell your brother Aaron that he may not come whenever he wants into the holy place behind the veil in front of the mercy seat on the ark or else he will what? He will die because I appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Come on, somebody. Aaron is to enter the most holy place in this way <laughs> with a young bull. Amen. Okay. Okay, with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Right. So in other words, when he went in there, he had to have some blood. Right. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. There's, power there's power in the blood. Yeah. Says Otis, there's power in the blood. Says Yuri, there's power in the, in the blood. You couldn't go in there just any kind of old way. 
Matter of fact, they had a rope on the high priest, so if he, if he did something wrong, they drug him out of there, amen. <laughs> they didn't go up in there, amen. <laughs> Reverend Pagay, Dr. Marshall, Reverend Pat, in the Old Testament, only the high priest could go into the Holy of Holies once a year and blood was offered the blood of bulls and rams that couldn't take away sin but could only cover sin but Jesus offered his blood that can truly wash away sin that atones for sin and that brings us back into fellowship with God again. Somebody tell three neighbors, thank God for the blood. Because of the blood, we can fellowship with God again. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 3 and 4, in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 3 and 4, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, Behind the second curtain was a room called the Most Holy Place, which had the golden altar of incense. This tells you what's, what's inside that Ark of the Covenant in a minute. And the gold-covered Ark of the Covenant. This Ark contained a gold jar of manna. Can I go there? And Aaron's staff that had budded. And the stone tablets of the covenant. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. That's what's inside the Ark of the Covenant. All right, all right, all right. And then Jesus, Jesus offered his blood in heaven that made the way for us to fellowship with God. Somebody ought to say, thank God for the blood. Tell them nothing there is power in the blood. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 24 through 26, in Hebrews chapter 9 and verses 24 through 26, the Bible says, For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands. Can y'all hear me this morning? That was only a copy of the true one. Can I go there? He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. Can y'all hear me this morning? Yeah. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. Can I go there this month? Yeah. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times. Can I say that again? Yes. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But he has appeared once. Somebody say once. Somebody say one time. But he, talking about Christ, has appeared once for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sin yes. by the sacrifice of himself. Yes. Somebody ought to get happy this morning. Yes. Can I go there this morning? Yes. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20. The Bible says by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. Somebody said thank God for his body. 
Now watch this. The earthly tabernacle that we saw is made like the heavenly tabernacle in heaven. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to get happy for a minute, all right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father, but what? But by me. I, I, I'm in some weird saints this morning. Uh, in the book of Revelation, it tells us in heaven, somebody say in heaven, the temple is open. And the ark of the covenant is, is on open display for everybody to see now. Because in Christ's kingdom, the redeemed can have perfect fellowship with God forever and ever. Our Chambers family say forever and ever. See, in the future, Brother Kazim, we can see God face to face. Brothers and Stuart, no longer looking through a glass darkly. We're going to see God face to face. Is that all right? See, when that blood is offered by Jesus on the altar in heaven, God can fellowship now with the redeemed because Christ's blood was put on the altar in heaven to atone for our sins. And now the redeemed can have perfect fellowship with God forever and ever. Sister Robbie, that was God's goal from the very beginning. That was what he was seeking to do. Can I go there this morning? Will we have fellowship with God forever and ever? Uh, tell me, there'll be no more dying there. There'll be no more crying there. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Revelation chapter 21, verse number 4. Sister Campbell, the Bible says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Can I go to this morning? Death will exit no longer. Excuse me. Death will exist no longer. Help me, Holy Ghost. Grief, crying, and pain will exist no longer because the previous things have passed away. Tell about 10 days, well, that's worth shouting about. Amen. Those of you who need comforting this morning, says Joanne, be comforted by these words. You know, the Bible says that when they looked up there, when John looked up there, he said there was lightnings and there was rumbling and, and there was peals of thunder and there was earthquake and severe hail storms. Well, there's a message right there. Judgment is about to come out of God's most holy place during this great tribulation period. We are going to look at the hidden forces that are going on in the background. I gotta say that one more time. We're gonna look at the hidden forces that are going on in the background. Judgment is on his way. Sometimes we need to go behind the scenes and see what's going on. John gets a chance to see what's going on behind the scenes. Can I go there this morning? In Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 1. The Bible says a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun somebody said the sun the woman is clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 
12 stars on her head. Somebody said 12 stars on her head. The question is this morning, just who is this woman? Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Uh, but since Moreau said, neighbor, who is this woman? We see the word being used here, sign. Well, sign, Jonathan, means it symbolizes something else. Sign here also reminds us that Jesus said these would happen at the end of time. You're going to see some signs. Can I back it up this morning? Luke chapter 21 and verse number 11. Luke chapter 21 and verse number 11. The Bible says there will be violent earthquakes. Somebody said violent earthquakes. It's Jesus talking. And famines. Somebody said and famines. And plagues in various places. Can y'all hear me this morning? Can y'all hear me this morning? And there will be terrifying sights and great signs from where? From heaven. Well, that's the Bible right there. A great truth is about to be revealed in the heaven, in the book of Revelation, just like Jesus said. Can I go there this morning? Dr. J. Vernon McGee is going to help us out this morning with some more eminent scholars to zero in on a great sign that God is speaking to us this morning. McGee says, the crux or heart or the most important point or the essence of the interpretation of the book of Revelation revolves around the first personality of the woman. McGee says, I believe that the, the identification of this woman is the key to understanding the book of Revelation. All right, come on now. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 1, Revelation chapter 12, verse number 1, the Bible says a great sign. Somebody say a great sign. Great sign. Not a little sign, but what kind of sign? A great sign appeared where? Yes. A woman clothed with what? The sun, the sun with what? The moon. the moon on her feet and what? How many stars? A crown of 12 stars. Now hear me, saints of God, especially ministers. It's good to let scriptures interpret scripture and don't do it yourself. What does this mean? Remember Joseph had a dream. Remember Joseph in the Bible? In Genesis chapter 37 and verses 9 through 11, he's going to help us unlock who this woman is. Then he had another dream and told it to his brothers. Look, he said, I had a dream. And this time the what? The sun. The sun and what? The moon. The moon and the eleven and what? Because he made the twelfth. <laughs> We're bowing down to me. Uh -huh. All right, watch it now. He told his father, Sister Wade, and brothers, but his father rebuked him. Uh -huh. Now watch this. What kind of dream is this that you have had? He said, are your mother and brothers and I going to bow down to the ground before you? Can y'all run with me? Mm -hmm. Jacob identified the sun, the moon, and the stars 
to mean himself, Rachel, the mother, and Joseph's brothers. How many brothers did he have? He made the 12th. So he had 11. There you go, mathematicians. <laughs> What's 11 plus 1? Okay. Can I go a little further? Then Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 2, the Bible says, Revelation 12, 2, she was pregnant and crying out in labor and agony to do what? To give birth. All right. Uh, if you had the King James Version, it says, women, you understand that this is travailing. She travailed. The King James Version says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Uh -huh. Y'all run with me. Israel has been portrayed as the wife of Jehovah, the bride of God. Can I back it up this morning? If you go to Isaiah chapter 54 and look at verse number 5, Isaiah 54 and 5, the Bible says, for your husband is what? Get a little Cheerio in your system. For your husband is what? Oh, Y'all doing pretty good. One more time. For your husband is what? His name is of hosts. And the Holy One of Israel is your what? Redeemer. Redeemer. He is called the God of what? Oh, we get good. Israel has been depicted in history as a travailing woman in the Old Testament. Can I go there this morning? Isaiah chapter 26 and verses 17 and 18 and Isaiah chapter 26 verses 17 and 18 the Bible says as a pregnant woman come on somebody about to give birth writhes and cries out in her pains so we were before you Lord and verse 18 says we became what? We became pregnant and we wreathed in pain. We gave what? Birth to win, which means nothing. We have won no victories on earth and the earth's inhabitants have not fallen. Can I go there this morning? And Jeremiah depicts also as Israel as a woman. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse number 31. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse number 31. The Bible says, I hear a cry like a what? Like a woman in what? In labor. A cry of anguish like one bearing her first child. The cry of daughter Zion gasping for breath, stretching out her hands, Woe is me, for my life is weary because of the murderers. Can I go a little bit further? Micah also portrays Israel as a woman. Can I go there? Micah chapter 4, verse number 10. Micah chapter 4, verse number 10. Micah chapter 4, verse number 10. The Bible says, wreathe in agony daughter Zion like a woman in labor for now you must leave the city to camp to the open fields can I go there yes. you will go to Babylon there you will be rescued there the Lord will redeem you out of the hands of your enemies okay preacher what is the conclusion this morning so Israel has been portrayed in scripture as a woman laboring in pain and as the wife of Jehovah. Can I go there this morning? Also it says 
Upon her head was a crown of 12 stars. I got a heavy question to ask you this morning. How many tribes are there? Tell 12 neighbors, there's 12 tribes, amen. Can I go there this morning? Ah, uh, the 12 stars represents the 12 sons. Can I go there? And the 12 sons became 12 tribes. Can I go there? The 12 tribes became the nation of Israel. Can I go there this morning? This woman in the vision represents Israel. Can I go there this morning? This is a clear reference to the 12 sons of Jacob who become the 12 tribes of Israel and they become the nation of Israel. Can I go there this morning? Just as a woman feels pain in childbirth, Israel has had pain in bringing forth Jesus Christ into the world. Can I go there this morning? When Christ was trying to come into the world, the devil was right there waiting on him. Can I back it up this morning? Can I go there this morning? Ah, uh, I got to give you a word on it this morning. Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, then another sign. Somebody shout, another sign. Come on, shout, another sign. Then another sign appeared where? In heaven. There was a great fiery red dragon having how many heads? Seven heads and ten horns. And on his heads were how many diadems? Seven diadems, seven crowns. His tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them to the earth. Can I go there this morning? And the dragon stood in front of the woman. Can I go there? Who was about to give birth. So that when she did give birth, he might devour her. Does the Bible say that this morning? Good God Almighty. Ooh, glory. I don't have to tell you who the red dragon is. How many of y'all know who the red dragon is? That's half of y'all, amen. Can I help the other half out? Uh, the, see, the, let the scripture interpret the scripture, Reverend Pat. Well, if you look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 9, it will tell us who that red dragon is. Can I go there this morning? So the great dragon was thrown out. Can I go there? They're going to tell us who this great dragon is, Estella. I agree. It's the ancient serpent who is called what? The devil and Satan. Can I go there? The one who deceived the whole world. Can I go there? He was thrown to the earth. Can I go there? And his angels with him. Am I right about it, person? Well, we see that the dragon is Satan. The devil. Not yet, preacher. I ain't ready yet. I'm getting close there. I see the preacher inching over there. I got a little ways to go there. Yeah, the devil. That clever snake. Can I go there this morning? Satan wants to stop the birth of Christ. Remember, but you might want to ask the question, but why does he want to stop the birth of Christ? Don't you know that's a good question? There's a reason why he wants to stop the birth of Christ. And it's in the Bible. 
Ah, uh, can I back it up this morning? Ah, uh, hallelujah. Because, hear me, saints. Because God prophesied to Satan in the Garden of Eden that Christ was going to destroy him. Destroy Satan. So would it make sense to do all that you can in your power to destroy the people who are going to bring Christ into the world? Can I go to this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Tell about five minutes. That makes sense. Now, 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 please tune in with me. A very, 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 very important scripture coming up that every saint needs to know. It's when God is speaking to Satan in that garden and tells him what I'm going to do to you. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Can I go there? This Scripture is related to Revelation chapter 12 that we're looking at this morning. Can I go there this morning? Please, please, you don't want to miss this. This is great wisdom from Dr. William Hendrickson talking to these preachers this morning. This is great Wisdom from Dr. William Hendrickson. I'm quoting this morning from him. He says, quote, Hallelujah. Revelation, Joanne, Revelation chapter 12 is based on the promise in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. All right. yeah. The same characters appear in both. Uh -huh. In both. Yeah. The same truth is proclaimed in both. The words of the promise are, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The serpent of Genesis chapter three is the dragon of Revelation chapter 12. Right. Hear your voice. <clears throat> Somebody say, say it again. Thank you, okay. The serpent of Genesis chapter three is the dragon of Revelation chapter 12. The woman's seed of Genesis 3 is the son, the man child of Revelation chapter 12. Preachers, I'm quoting right now. Also in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the expression her seed indicates the Christ. Here in Genesis 3, the conflict is announced. End of quote from Dr. Hendrickson. Continue on. Since the beginning, Satan has been trying his best to destroy the people that were going to bring in the one that's going to destroy him, the Jewish people. Satan is very much behind anti-Semitism. The way to stop the birth of Christ is to destroy the people who are going to bring Christ into the world. That makes obvious sense. Satan has always wanted to destroy the people of God. A great red dragon refers to Satan's fierceness. 
Come on, saints of God. His murdering spirit. His viciousness. Come on, saints of God. His killing spirit. His violent spirit. Don't you see all the bloodshed going on today? The dragon is blood red in that prophecy. Red denotes murder. He has a murdering spirit. Killing is going on all across the world. But then you know that Jesus prophesied who that devil is. Oh, he don't want me to talk this morning. He don't want me to pull the cover off him this morning. That's why he's interfered every kind of way he can interfere. Because I said, I'm going to pull the cover off this morning. Can I go there this morning? How do you know he's a liar? Can I back it up? The devil is a liar. I didn't, I didn't invent that. That's in the Bible. Some of y'all think, well, preacher, oh, he invented that. No, nah, that's in the Bible. Can I back it up this morning? Sister Roger, I got to back it up this morning. John 8, 44. The Bible says, you are, that, this, this, this is Jesus talking to the Pharisee about the devil. Say, you are of your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. Can I go there? He was a murderer from the beginning. And has not stood in the truth. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, because there is no truth in him. Divana, when he tells a lie, he, spree he speaks from his nature. I'm going to say that again. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his nature because he is a liar. Y'all thought I invented that. That's Jesus talking. Can I say it again? I'm going to do it anyway, so say, say it again. Because he is a liar. And the father of, of liars. Tell about 20 neighbors, he's a liar. Come on, he's a liar. The devil is a liar. And there is no truth in him. Oh, but Sister Wooder, he comes to kill. Sister Gilmer, he comes to steal. He comes to destroy. Jesus, but I come that you might have life. Come on, somebody. Say, wait. And have it more abundantly. Well, Brother Hyphen, the way to have life is to have Jesus. But let, let's go a little deeper about this devil. I'll just put the cover off him. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. The Bible said, unlike Cain, who was of the evil one, and murdered his brother. Did your Bible say that? And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. He was just jealous. The devil got on the inside of Cain and he killed his brother Abel. Can I go there this morning? This morning we are looking behind the scenes in the spiritual world to see the hatred of Satan for God. Satan hates God. And Satan hates you too. Yeah. And, and Satan hates God. And Satan hates you too. Is that all right, shine and shine? Dr. Brown, is that all right? Yeah, I was, I was waiting for that one, amen. This is a great conflict between Satan and God that went way back into the Garden of Eden. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it went further back than that. That's why Satan has aggressively sought to destroy Israel in the past in history. 
Can I go there this morning? Yes. Throughout the Old Testament history, Satan has tried to pre prevent, help me, Holy Ghost, prevent the birth of our Redeemer. Yes. Can I go there? Yes. There was always a dragon standing, waiting to destroy Israel. Yes. Can I back it up this morning? Yes. Can I go there this morning? Yes. Pharaoh tried to kill all the male children. Can I go there? See, when you kill all the males, you're trying to depopulate. Can I go there this morning? If you want to depopulate, just start wiping the males out. Y'all may not realize this, but two men together can't reproduce. Two women together can't reproduce. King Herod tried to kill all the babies, hoping to kill Jesus. Can I go there? But Lavelle Haman tried to kill the Jews during the time of Esther. Can I go there? Hitler killed about six million of them. Can I go there? Stalin killed quite a few too. Can I go there? There have been pogroms, crusades, holocausts, all kinds of anti-Semitic activities. Guess who is behind them? The great red dragon. The serpent. The devil. Can I go there this morning, Jackie? Many problems you've been having. Guess what? The devil is behind it. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor. The devil don't like Christians. Oh, we war against him. That's why we have to do spiritual warfare. Can I go to this morning? We have to war in the spiritual realm. Can I back it up this morning? Our Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 12, for our battle, can I go there, is not against flesh and blood. I need some help this morning. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness. Can I go there? Against spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Can, can I back it up this morning? There are things going on behind the scenes. There are things going on in the spiritual realm yes. that try to stop you, try to hinder you, try to destroy you. Yes. The devil want to do all he can to distract you. Yes. Can I go to this morning? Yes. There are things going on behind the scenes that are trying to make you fail. Yes. Can I go to this morning? You guys got some outstanding young people. And Sister Crystal Stitts is going to talk about it in May. And, and I've been hearing about it. You got young people going to UCLA and Howard University and, and going higher and higher. Don't you know the devil's mad about that? But tell about 10 neighbors, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Can I go there this morning? Y'all keep on pushing on and keep on going higher. Can I go there this morning? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, before his name was Satan, his name was Lucifer. Lucifer rebelled against God. Can y'all hear me this morning? Lucifer rebelled against God a long, long time ago. This, this, this is before the Garden of Eden. Can I go to this morning? The Bible records that there was a war in heaven in which Satan and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven to the earth. And they wanted to stop the birth of this woman's child. This happened before Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. I'm going somewhere this morning. We preaching the word this morning. This happened a long, long time ago. 
The devil's name used to be Lucifer. Yeah, he was an angel before he fell down. Can, can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? In fact, they call him a covering angel. He had a high position. But sometimes high position can go to your head. Can I go there this morning? God had to pull him down. Can I back it up this morning? Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. Every saint of God need to know this scripture. This is where he fell. It says, shining morning star. Do they call angels stars in the Old Testament? Shining morning star, how you have fallen from the heavens. You destroyer of nations. You have been cut down to the ground. You said to yourself, I will ascend to the heavens. I will set up my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the God's assembly in the remotest parts of the north. Come on, somebody. I will ascend above the highest cloud. I will make myself like the most high. How many of the I wills get you in trouble? But you will be brought down to Sheol into the deepest region of the pit. Can I go there this morning? Oh, Sister Grant, Sister McGlover, hallelujah. It's in the march. He got beside himself. Got too big for his britches. Can I go there this morning? Satan knows that Christ has power and awesome potentials. Somebody said awesome potentials. If he follows the plans of God, hear me now, and doesn't get derailed, and I'm going to say this, Christ, he recognized, had awesome potentials and great things that God was going to do and is doing through him. And I want to tell you this morning, you also have great potential. Tell three neighbors, and so do you. Tell five neighbors, if you follow the plans of God. Tell 20 neighbors, you have awesome potentials. Can I go there? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you have an awesome future. Come on, tell me you have an awesome future. Uh, awesome future. Come on, somebody say, awesome future. Good God, my. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Can I go to this morning? The book of Revelation says that God has some awesome blessings waiting on his children. Can I back it up this morning? Satan knows that Christ has an awesome future that's written in Psalms 2. God the Father was going to give God the Son reign, rule, and authority, and power over all nations. And Satan is determined, was determined to try to stop it because he reads the Bible. I know Satan reads the Bible. And tell two neighbors, that's why we ought to read it too. Amen. <laughs> Can I go there this morning? Revelation chapter 12, Brother Sean, and verse number 5, Revelation 12 and 5, Revelation 12 and 5, it says, But she gave birth to a son. 
Can I go there? A male who is going to shepherd all nations with an iron scepter. Can I go there? And her child was caught up to God. Come on, somebody. And to his throne. Somebody shout his throne. The man child. The other personality. The male child is Christ. Christ will put down all opposition. And Christ is going to put down all rebellion on this earth. The woman gave birth to a son. Israel, along with Mary, was responsible for bringing Christ into the world. Can I go there this morning? Yeah. Brother Doug, the Bible says that Christ will rule all nations yeah. with an iron scepter. You know, the, the Bible says that you will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Can I go there this morning? Please hear me. Satan knows this. Yes. Satan reads the Bible and he misquotes it to us because he figured we haven't read it. I hear a whole lot of stuff that's not in the Bible. A whole lot of names that are in the Bible. So I say, quiet myself, is that in the Bible? Tell you that every day you gotta back it up with the Bible. Take up the name of Oh, name Thus saith the Lord. Hold on, preacher, you're making me happy up here. Can I go there this morning? I'm just backing up, Joanne, this morning. Just backing up this morning. You gotta know the Bible because the devil reads the Bible. He be misquoted to you and you be out there misquoted too. Yeah. So who told you that? Oh no, I didn't read it. I gotta go there this morning. Yeah. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. Tells him he's gonna rule, break the future with an iron rod. From his mouth, talk about Jesus, came a sharp sword. That's the word. So that with it he might strike the nations. He will shepherd them with a what? An iron scepter. Can I go there? He will also trample the wine press of the fierce anger of God Almighty. Is that all right? Don't you see Psalms 2 and 9 in that verse? Scripture supporting scripture. Satan says to himself, I got to stop Christ at any cost, uh -huh. any way I can. Yeah. Jesus has an awesome calling, so the devil wants to stop him. Jesus has an awesome purpose, so the devil wants to stop him. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, you have an awesome calling. So the devil wants to stop you. Take your neighbor. You have an awesome purpose in your life. So the devil wants to stop you. At any cost. Can I go there this morning? Christ is going from the cross to the crown. Amen and amen and amen. He's going from the cross to the crown. To the neighbor. No cross. No crown. Jesus is going from the cross to the crown. Can I go there this morning? In Christ's triumphant return, he will destroy all nations. And Christ will have dominion over the new nations that arise under him when he brings in his kingdom. You read the Bible like I read. It says he's going to reign with an iron scepter. It means that an iron rod that cannot be broken. 
Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. he's going to preach anyhow. Yeah. It don't matter. Yeah. He can shout it out without a microphone. Yeah. He can run. Yeah. He can shout. Yeah. He can pray. Yeah. He can pray. Yeah. Good God Almighty, don't stir me up this morning. Yeah. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Tell the devil, don't mess with me, amen. Don't mess with me. I'm trying to be dignified. Every now and then, when I look back over my life, what the Lord has done for me, He put food on my table, clothes on my back, shelter over my head, kept me in my right mind, been so good to me, good God Almighty, God maybe let me finish this sermon, amen. When the devil starts messing with you, just go on the inside. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bone. How many of y'all got some fire this morning? Shut up in your bone. He's been good, been a mighty good God. Healed me when I was sick, picked me up in the morning, told me to run on anyhow. Take your neighbor, oh neighbor. I'm gonna run on, see what the end man gonna be. Good God Almighty. I, I gotta finish this word or the Lord might get me tonight, y'all. Students, the Lord might get me tonight. I gotta finish the word. <laughs> all right, all right. The male child, Jesus Christ, cannot be destroyed by Satan. Because he's caught away by God and to God's throne room. The ascension. That Revelation emphasizes the ascension. The gospel, the resurrection. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. How many know that's victory? Can I back it up this morning? Can I go there this morning? Acts chapter 2, verses 33 and 34. Acts chapter 2, verses 33 and 34. It says, therefore, since he has been exalted. Somebody say exalted. Come on, exalted. Get, take a deep breath and say exalted. To the right hand of God. And has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. Can I go there? He has poured out what you both see and hear. Can I go there? For it was not David who ascended into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Is that all right? Jesus showed us his power over Satan when he ascended. Can I go there? He told Satan, you can't touch this. Can I go there this morning? Once Christ was in heaven, Satan had no more access to him. Can I go there? Jesus is seated in power. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. A position of power. A position of might. A position of authority. A position of honor, a position of prestige, a position of privilege. To the neighbor, he's at the right hand. And he's praying for me and you. Can I go there this morning? So in the future, during the tribulation period, Satan, in his vicious anger, because he could not get to Christ, he's going to come after the woman who brought Christ into the world. 
Can y'all hear me this morning? The Antichrist will try to persecute Israel with a great wave of anti-Semitism like the world has never seen before. How many of you know that God knows how to protect his people? Yeah. Yeah. So the way, can I back it up this morning? Yeah. Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 6. Yeah. The Bible says, uh, the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place, watch it now, prepared by who? God. Prepared by God to be fed there for how long? 1,260 days. Now let's do, let's do a little mathematics this morning. How long is the tribulation? Okay, tribulation is seven years. Now what's one half of seven? All right, three and a half. How long is 1,260 days if we use 360 days in one year? Three and a half years. Yeah, you said it. The worst and most unbearable time in all of history of the world will take place in that last three and a half years and it's called Jacob's Troubles. Jesus said himself, these will be the roughest of time like you've never seen before. And you need to write this down. This is in the Bible. The last three and a half years Tribulation will be seven years, but the last three and a half will be the roughest. That's when the Antichrist will take over. Do you know why? Because the devil gets kicked down to the earth and can't get back up in heaven no more. He's going to possess the Antichrist. Can I go there this morning? Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 21. Coming close to the end, saints. Focus real close. Matthew 24, 15 through 21. 24, 15 through 21. Watch this. So when you see the abomination that causes desolation, do you know what that is? That's when the Antichrist goes in the temple after the first three and a half years. After the first three and a half years, Right in the middle, when Satan possess him, he's going to go into the temple and says, guess what? You don't need to worship God up there. I am God. All right, come on down. All right. And if you don't worship me, you ain't going to live. And you need to take the mark of the beast. Can I go there? So when you see the abomination that causes desolation, spoken by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, Jesus talking, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must what? Flee to the mountains. Come on, give me a little bit more. A man on the housetop must not come down to get things out of his house, and a man in the field must not go back to get his clothes. Must be awful bad, come on. Woe to the pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. Pray that your escape may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for at that time there will be great what? Tribulation. Say it real loud. Tribulation. Say it the loudest of loud. Tribulation. For at the, that time there will be great tribulation. The kind that has that hasn't the kind that hasn't taken place from the beginning of the world until now and never will again. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. I'm landing my plane now. I got it in your spirits. Tell your neighbor. Hallelujah. Say neighbor. neighbor. The book of Revelation, book of Revelation. Gives, you details. gives you details. Watch it now. Despite Satan's 
fiercest efforts, uh -huh. he will not be able to destroy the woman. Uh -huh. Which means Satan will not be able to destroy Israel no matter how hard he tries. No Let me break that down to you this morning. No matter how hard the devil tries, he can't destroy you if you're walking with Jesus. Take it in this morning. Take it in this morning. No matter how you try, he can't destroy you if you're walking with Jesus. Can I, can I go there? Take that neighbor. If God be for you, who can be against you? Take it in this morning, saints of God. God is bringing that word to you this morning. Satan has a special hatred for God's people. But God has his protection around you. Take that neighbor. God got his fire around me. So God got his wall around me. So God got his blood around me. So I'm covered. I'm protected. Hey, glory. Uh, I'm about to land this plane. Satan has a special hatred for the Jewish people. Satan has a special hatred for the Christians. Satan has a special hatred for God's people. But Jesus said he hated me before he hated you. Can I go this day this morning? Take their neighbor. But God, but God will protect his people. Help me over here, but God will protect his people. Can I go over here? But God will protect his people. Come on, but God will protect his people. Come on, but God will protect his people. Can I go there this morning? I'm about to land my plane. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm protected, but never neglected. I need some help this morning. I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I hear you this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I go here this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I go here this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I go here this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I get you to stand on your feet this morning and shout, I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I shout it this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Can I shout this morning? I'm protected, but never neglected. Am I right about it? God knows how to protect his people. Now, now y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. I'm just about through. I'm just about through. I, God sent a word to get in your spirit this morning. No matter what the devil does, Minister Cockrell, he cannot destroy us. Mr. Cockrell, no matter what he does, he cannot destroy us. He, he, he can roof. He can huff, he can puff, but he can't blow your house down. To the neighbor, he can huff, he can puff, but he can't blow my house down. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Am I right about it? He does a whole lot of huffing and puffing. But if you are on the rock, the solid rock, I stand all over the ground is sinking sand. I'm landing my plane, folks. I'm landing my plane. I'm just about to get there. I'm protected and never neglected. And God has a plan that nobody can stop. Uh, hallelujah. 
Tell you what, neighbor, what's for you is for you. Come on, somebody. What's for you is for you. Come on, what's for you is for you. The devil can't block it. The devil can't stop it. What's for you is for you. Can I go there? He can throw his stumbling blocks. He can huff and puff. But what's for you is for you. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Now, 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 now. I'm protected. Never neglected. God protects his people. Would you tell seven neighbors what's for you is for you? I'm a land plain, but I got to let, sister, I got to let the Holy Spirit, let it seep in, Stella and Bree, got to let it seep in the people that get in their spirit. And, and you got to see all this together, what God's plan is. Dr. Brown, Dr. Dove, Sister McGlover, pick on these teachers, Sister Grant. I sat in the class, Betty and Evelyn, at Fuller Theological Seminary. And a light bulb went off when this one professor was talking. I said, ah, oh, he put the whole picture together, what I've been always trying to see and understand about the plan of God. And I'll never forget how that light bulb went off when I was sitting in that class of what God is doing. I just want to share that and then I'll just land and end the plane. But, but, the, but the student, me, was listening and the light bulb just went off. He said, uh, when you look at the Bible, you can almost see two sections. Genesis chapter 1 through 11, and then Genesis chapter 12 to Revelation chapter 22. He says, in the first section of the 11 chapters, you can see God through the Holy Spirit giving us a message that his creation is flawed by sin. And in the first 11 chapters, he lets you see that he's dealing with his whole creation. But he's giving you a message that my creation has been flawed by sin. He gives you high points in those first 11 chapters. miss those high points that he's giving you a message, preachers, in those high points. It's always good to see things in context. What is the author trying to say? And I very much hear Reverend Haynes when she says, I read the back of the book sometimes to see if it's worth reading. I heard you very clearly. The, Re the book of Revelation, where is it located? Your geniuses. What's in the front of the book? So in the first 11 chapters, he's given us a message. My creation has been flawed. And he gives you high points of where the flaw is. But watch now, he's dealing with everybody, everybody. First one, Adam and Eve, I wanted to fellowship with them. I wanted to have something good with them and fellowship and everything. But then Adam and Eve sinned. Yeah, yeah. 
then later on it tells you how bad the sin was Cain killed his own brother Abel and another man later on bragged about I killed seven folks Cain, Cain killed one I killed seven God is saying through the Holy Spirit my creation is flawed then chapter 6 the angels mated with the creation if you take that interpretation he's saying a flaw has happened the angels have made it with the creation now another interpretation is this that the godly line of Seth married with the, the ungodly line of Cain and he didn't want that another flaw then another big flaw came when Nimrod came in and built those towers when I told you to multiply and go throughout the earth, replenish the earth, y'all said y'all going to stay together. And that's when at the Tower of Babel came in idolatry. And then we're going to see God get rid of idolatry when we get to 17 and 18 of Revelation. Now watch this. God says, I'm in it to win it. And it ain't over until I say it over. So when he gets to chapter 12, the light bulb went off to that student's head. When he gets to chapter 12, he says, I'm not going to deal with the whole creation. I'm going to start off with a man. Get to chapter 12. It becomes very, very critical. Y'all don't mind if I do this. Can I sit down right here? Can I act like the rabbis? When he gets to chapter 12, he says, instead of dealing with the whole creation, I'm going to deal with one man. Abraham, I'm going to call you out from your land, Earl Chaldee. And then from you, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Now watch this, watch this. To Abraham was born Ishmael, and God said, no, that ain't the one. Don't rush me. <laughs> God said, don't rush me. I'm going to do it when it seems impossible to be done. I'm going to give you a baby when you're 100 years old. So, so from Abraham comes Isaac. From Isaac comes Jacob and Esau. And from Jacob and Esau come how many sons? Twelve sons. And from twelve sons come twelve what? And from twelve tribes come what nation? And who is born out of Israel? And now I'm going to go back and do what I started off. You see how I was going to work with all the creation? But now, through this one man named Jesus, if I be lifted up, from the earth, I will draw what? Men where? Give God a hand of praise. A mighty, marvelous, genius God we serve. Is he all right? Touch your neighbors. He's an awesome God. On time God. Great God. Mighty God.